So the topic is shoreline erosion in Frenchman Bay, and I show footage of Cape Cod uh, to see what's happening there from Google Earth photos. Uh, Taunton Bay, of our wharf here, and the Esker across the way. So these are the sites that I show. Sand Beach is eroding. Hulls Cove uh, has problems. Salisbury Cove, the uh, ocean area was right in here, and Thompson Island is where I've been monitoring for a number of years. Then up here in Taunton Bay, the Hancock Sullivan, uh, the Esker in Hancock right there. So here's a house, innocent looking house, you can tell us by the seashore because it has seagulls in the top. Here's the back door. This is Salisbury Cove. They've obviously put in some boulders for riprap to shore it up. But you know, this is about six feet from the back corner of the house. And you know, those in some circumstances in the near future, that's going to be undercut by waves coming in there. It's pretty sheltered. But I would be nervous if that was my house on this school. Yeah. And that's just one indicator. Here's Route 3 in Hulls Cove. Here's in Gulf of Maine. These are moderate waves. You've seen waves when the spray washes over the road. And I was looking at, you know, they just repaved it this past month or so. And uh, they're going to have to put in riprap like this. But it's one of those places. Imagine the road from between Ellsworth and Bar Harbor being breached by, you know, that road could be swept away in a storm. Because this is open to the east. And a nor'easter or an east wind could wipe out that whole thing in one terrible storm. So it makes me a little anxious. This is a, a long rock. It's actually six feet long like that. But this is the end view of it. We call it Teal Rock uh, in Northeast Creek. As my indicator of how high the tide is. And you can see there's a line right here. When the tide gets up here, that's about as high as it gets in the typical year. So this is a high tide, but it's not as high if it could rise four more inches. And this is where the water meets the land in the Thompson Island picnic area. And you see, the water has undercut the bank. The bank has slumped down. And this is happening every day. The tide comes up, uh, undercuts the bank, and the topic here is how much is this eroded and how, much, how fast is it going? The grass dies, is swept away, ready for the next onslaught, and then the next onslaught. So the ocean is taking bites out of the frisbee playing area of the Thompson Island area as we sit and watch. Here in the winter, I've taken my ruler and put it under the grass. Here it goes, it's undercut eight tenths of a foot, one foot, nine tenths of a foot, 1.2 feet, 1.2 feet, and nine tenths. So it's already waiting for the next flat to come down when the soil no longer can support it. So the erosion is worse than it looks. Here is the result of salt water freezing on top. This came from here, it didn't come from here. So in December, in the storm, the waves splashed up here. Here's a map from 1963 of the picnic area in Thompson Island. Here is the approximate high tide line in 1962. Over here. 
Here are contours above, I think, mean low water. So here's 6 feet, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 feet. So this is 12 feet above that. These are fire rings that are used for grilling hamburgers. They're cast iron rings to contain fire. And here is the line where the tide is now. So this, all this land has gone since this map was made in 1962. So the question is, and look at the gradient. The shoreline now is up on the gradient of nine feet, where it started out at five feet or six feet. So the vertical height is at least three feet of soil that has been taken off of the picnic area. 50 year shoreline recession is that much. 50 years, and that's the time when I did my research from 1962. That circle is the spruce tree growing on the edge. And that spruce tree toppled by its roots being undercut by the tide in February of 2010. Here's the spruce tree, and this is taken up low tide. So the tide, high tide line, you can see, is right here along up here. And it used to be out there. So all of this has eroded in 50 years. Here are the fire rings as they stand now in 2007. One beyond the tree, one this side of the tree, one in the open, one on the other side of that tree, one on the other side of that tree. There's one, and here's one. This, the gradient comes up, so this is three feet above water. So that's why this is well back from the shore. Down there, they're pretty close. Here's the first fire ring on the far side of the tree in the storm of 2007. 2008, it's about a foot back from the water. 2010, it's inundated. And you can see the tide is well beyond it. It's sweeping fieldless seaweed up on the grass behind it. And so here in 2012, it's three quarters of a foot. And when I took it, Last year, on a high tide, November 16th, the tide was coming right up to the edge of the fire. And its <coughs> top was going up into the water. Here's the tree. But on 2006, 2008, it's leaning. There it is in the winter of 2009. There it is, undercut by the tide in 2010, February 26th. So it's called a 12-foot spruce on the map. Here it is, 101 rings of about 25 and a half inches, 25 and a quarter inches. So it was a big tree, and its time had come. So here's fire ring two, the one right next to the tree, 2006, 2007. And it's bumped down in the water, high tide comes up to the, and here the fire ring is gone and the whole pad is in the high tide line in those six years. Steve, is this part of Acadia National Park? Pardon me? Is this part of Acadia National Park? It is. You would think the managers would be with the rings. Well, I ask them not to make oh. them tidy and pick them up. Because it's a good landmark That's right. uh, for Perrin to come along and take pictures. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to heed me or not. I've shown them. 
I showed the pictures to the staff. Here's that fire ring number two at high tide let, well, almost a year ago. Uh, that was those extreme tides we were experiencing. Pardon me? Those were the extreme tides we were experiencing. Yeah, those are the extreme tides. Yeah. But they're the ones, you know, you, sea level rise is a very difficult concept to get a hold of. Where is the mean tide that you measure against? I measure against the highest tide of the year. And I say, is that going up? And that's a function of atmospheric pressure, wind direction, uh, the fetch of the waves, and so forth. And I talk about that a little bit. A storm like this does heavy er erosion because they hammer that edge along here. This is 2007. Here's firing two is still there. Firing three is out in the open. Firing four is out in the open. There's firing three, well back from the edge in 2006, right on the edge in 2007, getting inundated in 2010. In 2012, you can see this is separated and the whole thing is sloping down. So here it is in 2016 at the highest tide of the year. And it may not be the highest tide of the year because there wasn't much wind. If there was a strong wind, it would have been higher, or if there had been uh, low pressure. But you can see, for practical purposes, the whole thing is in the tidal of zone. So here's looking the other way, with firing four in the foreground, firing three, firing two, and the tree back in 27. Firing four, still there, but its pad has broken up, leaning into the tide line. The ring is gone, and it's all shattered. And then in 2010, here's a little piece up there. Here's this slope on that. And in 2016, it's all underwater. So this is the erosion at work as easily as I can measure it at the highest tide that I can find during a given year. Here's firing five. It's back there from the edge. Here it is a year later tilting, tilting, and it's in the tide line. So in six years, it has gone from being flat on the land. And I'll detail that. Its far edge is five feet from the tide line. And I'll show that closer up. You can see there's a pad there. And in 2016, December, it's five feet back from the edge. And then here it is in 2012. So the tide has eaten five feet of the land from out from under that particular fire ring. It's eaten from under the roots. This tree is leaning out. It's going to be one of the next ones to go. There it is at the heights of tide. It's been reclaimed. It's now in the intertidal zone. Prodding underneath the trees just next to that, it's about one point about one foot deep is already eroded underneath it. Up on the other end of that tree, it's 2.8 feet. My tape measure goes back in under. So that's just waiting to happen. That tree is waiting to fall when the conditions are right. Fire ring six, 2007. You see its edge is supported by that rock, it's still supported by that rock, so that's holding it up as the tide rises higher and higher. And in 2016, the tide comes right up to the bottom edge of that particular fire. And 
putting my ruler under that, it's 3.2 feet undermined under that stone that's being held up by this stone. This is the one on top of the bank, the last one to go, and it's very hard to determine where it is according to the bank. Uh, this is getting eaten away with the stronger tide. And on the higher side, it still has a foot to go in the vertical height. It's still there. But it's going to be the last of that row of firelands. Here I tried to see how far back it was from the edge. It looks like it's about 2.3 inches. 2.3 feet. Here it looks like it's 1.7 feet. So the storm of March 1st, 2010 was a bad one. Here's fire ring one inundated, fire ring three, fire ring three, and two is back there, fire ring three, fire ring three, with water splashing all around it. Here's Cape Cod. No, this is Sand Beach. This fence used to stand up this tall out of the beach. Now the, the waves have come and put the sand back there, undercut that bank. This is 29. Uh, the waves come up and reach the foot of the bank, taking sand out. Here's Thunder Hall, you don't want to go down and watch it or anything like that. Here's Taunton Bay, undercut there with turf on the surface that used to be growing up there. And this birch tree clump is the next thing to go. Here's 2016, this big plaque of turf. This is eight feet long, so eight feet deep of that bank has been swept away from underneath it. And you can see the tide eating the bottom away. This is the highest tide, this is the lower, lower one. And you can see the sand just slumps down on the beach. And here's where the sand goes, it goes under this growing flat which is fed by the bank coming down, eroding. Here's 2010. You can see it crumbling, 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 crumbling. Here's 2016. This white pine tree is leaning. Its roots are undercut. The bank is undercut. And here in 2017, that fell down. So it's just a gradual process, and if you look at it, it looks fine, but just wait a year, and it's going to look very different. Uh, and the, this is being eaten away, this is going to disappear, I would predict, very rapidly, this end of the ridge. This is just different angles. And this is all along that, trees near the shore are being undercut. This is the southern end of Cape Cod in Massachusetts. Here is the flat land on the top of that spit, and these bites have been taken out of it as the bay slumps down this way and down this way. And then the vegetation ends up in the deep part of the inside. So the same thing is happening on Cape Cod as it's happening in Tonson Bay. The waves just keep coming and coming, and you can see the topsoil is being slumped down across the surface, and it's just being eaten away, eaten away. This is a this is a cranberry bog up on the backside of the cape, and somehow this water is draining through the bank, taking sand with it, and the sand of the bank is eddying up along the coastal current. So that's erosion in process. And that's happening right across the road here. The sand is being taken up with the incoming tide, 
-hmm. And you left um, the day inside. Just with the horseshoe crabs. <laughs> they don't care, they survive worse. So here's, um, here's the fork, and you notice this side of the fork is a little deeper. This is deep water, this is kelp beds out here. Watch this point. That's this point on December 14, 2016. The corner is right there of the fork. The salt water has come up over the fork. The boat is on the edge of the wharf in deeper water. He's standing in the water on the wharf. And you can see, you know, this lobster car is resting on dry ground. These are half in the deep. <coughs> and the seagulls have no place to rest. I began the seagull, I end the seagull. So here is number one, there's number two, there's number three, there's number four, we're left to the number five, number six, number seven. Thompson Island shoreline is a work in progress. The park service hasn't done anything to regrade or anything. So this is all natural. There's this is all natural. No well, no, they put in those granite blocks in 1962 yeah. to try to break the waves, but the waves, you know, over the years have jiggled it. This is the ocean area on November 16th. It comes right up to the corner of the barn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's happening now. This whole establishment, in, you know, you'll see it in the newspaper, it's going to get dry <coughs> at some point when the conditions are right, and the conditions are almost right now. <laughs> so, you know, my message is it's happening now as we watch, and if you watch it at intervals, you can see it happening. And if you know, if you have no memory, then nothing's happening. But if you have a memory the way it used to be, that 40 feet of Acadia National Park no longer exists. And they know that. Are they doing anything? I don't know what could be done. Because it would be hugely expensive to armor the coast, to put riprap on the coast, and so forth. So, so that's my entertainment for today. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. You can see that sort of thing. <laughs>